Welcome to the Sanibel Shell Festival, a collaboration between two independent groups, the Sanibel Captiva Shell Club and the Sanibel Community Association. The Sanibel Shell Club sponsors the Shell Show inside the Community House and the Sanibel Community Association sponsors the outdoor activities. The Shell Festival is held the first Thursday, Friday, and Saturday of March at the Sanibel Community House. I'm Tom Ansley, a member of the Sanibel Shell Club, and it's my pleasure to tell you here about the Sanibel Shell Show. The Shell Club has an educational mission, and over 50 years ago, it assumed the responsibility for the annual Shell Show. The proceeds from the competitive Shell Show support the club's grants program. The shell crafters and the shelling bees work throughout the year, preparing for the shell festival. The income from the shell art and the shell sales supports the community house. The word seashells is synonymous with Sanibel, and shell enthusiasts come from around the world to compete in the Sanibel Shell Show. It is the longest running and most prestigious competitive shell show in the country. Competitors come from across the United States and Canada and far away as India, Europe, New Zealand, Japan, and the Caribbean. Winning an award at this show means you have reached the pinnacle. In 2020, there were 295 exhibits in the Shell Show. Competitors came from 60 cities in 23 different states and four countries. What can you expect to see at the Shell Show? Shells, of course, but not only those you might find on Sanibel's beaches, but shells from around the world. These shells can be seen in fascinating scientific exhibits and exquisite works of art, such as floral bouquets and the ever-popular Sailor's Valentines. It takes almost a year to plan a shell show. Things shift into high gear when the entry forms start to come in. Every year, Shell Club members fill 3,000 small gift bags with Sanibel shells. These are given to people who make a voluntary donation to see the show. All the profits from the Shell Show are given out in the form of education and research grants. Three days before the show opens, the rooms are set up. The tables must be absolutely level. Then the space for each exhibit must be measured accurately. Over 690 linear feet of exhibit space needs to be prepared. The stage in the scientific exhibit hall is set up with shell-related games and a mini theater where people can watch interesting videos of live mollusks. The following day, the exhibitors arrive. In the scientific hall, single shell exhibits are placed in the front rows and larger exhibits are placed behind them. Some exhibits are 40 feet in length. In the artistic hall, both the tables and walls are used to display the exhibits. Judging is done the following day. The identities of the exhibitors are hidden until after the judges reach their decisions. Everything is ready for opening day. Everyone is eager to see the new exhibits because they seem to get better and better every year. The scientific exhibit hall is the first room you enter when you go into the shell show. Shell collectors can simply enter their favorite shell, or they can create an exhibit that contains multiple shells. There are 27 different classes of competition. The long white strips mark the beginning and end of each class. Cards next to the strip tell what is in the class. It also tells you whether an exhibitor found the shells themselves or if they have purchased them. Self-collected means that they found the shells themselves. Any source means that they may have purchased the shell, received it as a gift, or they could have found it. Self-collected shells are given a higher score than shells from any source if both are of equal value. Each shell must have an identification card with the scientific name on the first line, as well as the name of the person who first named the shell and described the species. The year that you see is when the new species was described, not when the shell was found. Now that you have an introduction to the shell show, let's look at some exhibits. 
There are exhibits of large shells and exhibits of shells so small that you have to use a magnifying glass to see them well. There are exhibits that contain only one shell and there are exhibits that might contain hundreds of shells. Exhibits might be strictly scientific in detail or they might combine science with a bit of art. There is a class especially for fossils and there is a class for other sea life such as urchins. What do the judges look for when they're judging? In multiple shell exhibits like this, aesthetics, the quality of the shells, the accuracy of the labels and the text, and the exhibit's educational value are all equally important. This award-winning exhibit focuses on venom cone snails and their harpoon-like teeth that they shoot into their prey. The venom from the geography cone can easily kill an adult. Single-shell specimen judging is based on two things, the quality of the shell and how it is displayed. The quality of the specimen is important, but the rarity of the shell may also be considered. A rare shell will be given more points than a common shell. This exhibit took lots of imagination. It is for shells that are abnormal. This mollusk general hospital is filled with misshapen shells. When the mollusk's mantle, that is the organ that is responsible for building the mollusk's shell, is injured, it can result in abnormal shell growth. This is an extensive collection of what some refer to as freak shells. The accompanying backboards explain how shells grow and regenerate. Note that each shell has the required identification card. Just as there is a vast variety of scientific shell exhibits, there is a vast difference in the age of our exhibitors. Shell Club member Evelyn Spencer was 98 years old when she was interviewed by Bill Geist for CBS Sunday Morning in 2013. She volunteered every day at the Shell Show and also won two blue ribbons. In 2019, Nicholas Baker and his sister Olivia won their first ribbons in the Young Scientist class for kindergartners to sixth graders. Their brother Dominic won a blue ribbon in the seventh through twelfth grade class and the Best Young Scientist award for his exhibit. Leaving the scientific world of shells, prepare to be amazed by the beauty and creative world of shell art. I'm Mary Burton, Chair of the Artistic Division. Exhibits range from the simplicity of a single stem of flowers to beautiful floral arrangements. You will see mirrors adorned with shells, outstanding needlecraft, and everyone's favorite, the intricate and detailed Sailor's Valentines. All the exhibits were created using imagination, shells, marine life, patience, and skill. This large octopus measures 42 inches by 40 inches and is 24 inches tall. It consists of 10,000 shells that were collected by the exhibitor and weighs 82 pounds. Artistic features a hobbies division and a professional division with a combined total of 61 classes. The only difference between the two divisions is the professional exhibitors sell their art. There are two young artist classes. They are based on their grade level in school, kindergarten through fifth grade, and sixth grade through high school. The diversity of exhibits range from elegant and detailed works of art to fun and whimsical presentations. Every class has a criteria that the exhibit must adhere to in order to avoid disqualification by the judges. The criteria of this particular class stipulates that sea life with or without shells are to be used. The artist chose sea life only and used dyed gar and fish scales as well as dyed and natural sea urchin parts to create the flowers. What makes a winner? Artistic exhibits are judged on the quality of craftsmanship, the quality and choice of the materials, the arrangement, its beauty, and the originality of the creation. Excessive glue, glue strings, broken shells, dust, and other flaws can make the difference between receiving a ribbon or none at all. 
Let's take a look at some of these winning exhibits. Sculpted urchins and urchin spines were primarily used in this modern sailor's valentine. The figure of Marie Antoinette was sculpted and painted by the exhibitor. He created her wig from mohair and her dress is made entirely from shells. Hand carved pieces of capiz shell with tiny drilled holes mimicking lace adorns the end of each sleeve. Her left hand holds a fan fashioned from carved capiz shell. All the pieces of this beautiful set of jewelry were created using pink chitons, trivia shells, and cultured pearls. This double valentine received two major awards for its meticulous craftsmanship and beautiful design. This exhibit received many comments. These bleeding heart blooms are made from dyed heart cockle shells and gar scales. Colorful shell flowers surround the beautiful painting of a mermaid. Notice the intricate shell patterns outside the floral ring. Only one species of shell was used to make the base of this lamp. Imagination has no limits in shell art. A lattice border of sea urchin spines surrounds a swan crafted by the exhibitor from abalone mother of pearl. This ostrich egg is covered with tiny shells and has an urchin at its base. The butterflies in this valentine are hand carved from mother of pearl found in abalone shells. What else can you do while you're at the shell show? Go up on the stage and rest your feet while you watch a video about live mollusks. While you are there, play one of the shell games. They're fun for adults and children. Do you need help identifying a shell? Bring it to the shell show and talk to one of our experts. Talk to local authors about their latest book and get an autographed copy. Check out the shell sales table for beautiful shells and more. Children get to choose a nice shell after they complete the scavenger hunt. Learn more about the Sanibel Shell Club at our club table. Buy a t-shirt at our tent right outside the door. Using your cell phone, we will take a picture of you in a bikini. Looks real, doesn't it? Guys do it too. Let's look outside at what's going on on the grounds of the community house. Throughout the year, people collect shells and donate them to the Sanibel Community Association. Volunteers, known as the shelling bees, meet on a weekly basis to sort the shells and get them ready for sale during the festival. You can buy them for as little as 25 cents. Almost every Monday, shell crafters meet at the community house to create beautiful floral arrangements made from shells. This is a real treasure chest of shells. Crafters even make cute little shell animals like these elephants and black cats. If you are curious about how to make shell flowers, these crafters are happy to show you how to do it. The money raised by the outdoor activities supports the community house. If you have never seen a live mollusk, now is your chance. During the shell festival, aquariums in this building come alive with mollusks. When they are in the 6th grade, Sanibel School students study mollusks and the shells they create. They get the chance to share their knowledge with the public during the shell festival. At the end of the festival, the mollusks are returned to their natural habitat. We hope you've enjoyed this overview of the Sanibel Shell Festival. All the profits from the Shell Show are given out in the form of education and research grants. Over $350,000 in grants have been awarded from 1997 to 2020. We look forward to seeing you at the next Sanibel Shell Festival.